It's not in the cards for you. I'm pretty good at insults. And I got the internet and a lot of free time. You don't see a lot of board games where there'd be something like a grid over like the map of an entire planet or perhaps like a map over the United States. You occasionally do see those in the advanced squad leader games and the squad leader games and other war games like that. But it would have to be something that cuts down on luck. Like you could roll the dice and move in a certain way. Or maybe you would have a move allowance of how many spaces you can move in a turn. But you don't see a lot of things like this where maybe you're moving around harvesting. And it's based more in realism rather than a fantasy or sci-fi element. Like underneath this there would be that map. I'm going to upload something to show you guys what I mean by this. As you can see, I originally went with a triangular pattern for the grid <clears throat> for each of the sections. You would be able to move one, two, or three areas out. Like, if you're here, you can obviously only move to something where it connects on the side. But then I graduated along and started messing with hexagon ideas. Well, I'm sure you would just love to see all of my stuff, but I'm not going to show you all of it. Just notes after notes. Um, <clears throat> and then I was going to go with the square one just because I thought it would be simpler. But as you can see from what I posted on Instagram, I'm going with a hexagon pattern. So the object will be to go around harvesting something instead of, you know, making war. Um, I'm kind of tired of the American trash or Ameritrash games were just all about battle. You know what I mean? It's not that I have a moral objection to battle in a board game. It's just that I kind of want something that's a little deeper than just battle. Like you're harvesting what you need to make weapons or whatnot. So I kind of work within that idea of like you would have to harvest things to make things to do battle. And those battle things would not be determined by dice, but would be determined by like a card or something. Like you would have all those things where you would need wood, you would need uh, iron, you would need gunpowder, which would be ore, and you'd need charcoal to make gunpowder. <clears throat> so you would need to do certain things to perhaps build a gun. And then when you got close, that gun might be worth three, but they might have a knife and that would be worth only one or two. So you would be harvesting things to make your weapons, or you just don't have battle at all. And um, you harvest things to do something. Like in the game that I'm currently building, you're harvesting cakes. And then you're playing cards to fit the meal, uh, high fat, low calorie, battle sequence with the cards rather than like a fight fight battle but another game that I'm working on you would uh, be building a grove of indicator dice it's kind of like um, Carcassonne but with dice if you know anything about Carcassonne where you draw a tile and then you try to fit it with the other sequences in order to build a city <clears throat> in the game that I'm envisioning it would be something along the lines of you would roll the dice and you place it on a hexagon and you need to connect at least six things to that die within that hexagon in order for you to have a complete orchard and that orchard would then yield a fruit of your choosing. Like you would go and then you would, uh, well I want to do cherry, I want to work on a cherry. So you would grab the cherry which would be represented by a red bead or whatnot a strawberry would be a pink bead or whatnot and you would be building sequences of different things i'm trying to get that uh sorted out i i pretty much do have it sorted out for about three games as harvesting to make weapons dynamic that i'm working on or mechanism you could say um, but it's really just kind of to experiment with a new kind of mechanism i have one grid that i'll, I'll put up that I really like that's 900 spaces and I might use that. Right now I'm thinking of the neoprene mat idea 
but I'm thinking about instead uh, doing a six-sided board or a four-sided or a four-fold board, six-fold, four-fold, and then there's a neoprene mat idea, uh, like your mouse pad. So, <clears throat> I'm sure this is boring with just, you know, my hand and your way right there, but uh, we're going to do it like that. You know, I just thought of age proximus relationships are more narcissistic than age gap relationships. Because when you're a narcissist, you're trying to find someone exactly like you to fuck. Because they look like you, you little narcissist. Anyway, I'm going to post that great in a mo. Oh, damn. I was trying to play Spotify through this, and I guess I don't have the proper phone to do that. Ugh. <laughs> It's gonna have some ghost man going on while I was talking. I gotta figure out how to do that. I might need a better phone. Um, but anyway, I want more of a. Oh, fuck it. I, I kind of like the idea that I have. You, you go around. First off, you, you lay down the board, okay? The, you, the board is hexagons, it covers the entire planet. Um, because it's a map. So you put um, a square chip on each one of the hexagons, something like 200 of them on that specific grid on the neoprene map that I'm going to have it on. Um, but I'm debating whether or not to make that one first or the other one where it's like Carcassonne with dice because I like that idea too. So I'm trying to figure out which one I want to make first. I got $100 right now that I can spend on it, but I need to cash a check to get it at Wells Fargo. And in order to do that, I need to get my ID. Because I put some money on a debit card, and it didn't go through, so I called and asked them to refund that, and then they refunded it after like a bunch of arguing over the thing because they were trying to do it one way or another, and I needed all this documentation. It's like I don't have my Social Security card. I was homeless. I don't have my ID. Uh, another picture ID. I don't. I had to struggle to get two pieces of mail. One of the staff members sent me two pieces of mail, so that I could have two pieces of mail, just pieces of paper within them, uh, in order to get my ID card, um, or to get the. I'm sorry, to get the money off the debit card to activate it. Um, um, but like not having an ID has hampered some of this shit where I, I, I can't catch this check. So I'll have a hundred dollars and the idea will be now this is here. Ouch. You didn't hear that. But anyway, you have dice, and uh, you know you'll roll one at a time. Okay, so that's a five. That means you're going to set it on a hexagon um, on the grid, and that'll be you. You need to connect at least five other dice to that hexagon in order for it to be a complete orchid. But as you're built, uh, um, let's say orchid, I meant orchard. Um, as you're doing that, you're also getting other dice, like you might get a six, and then you have to connect six to that specific one, but eventually you're going to build an orchard, and once you get the orchard, you can have a fruit, and you have to create combos of different fruits, like you'll have to have the cherry, you'll have to have the, the lime, you'll have to have lemon, just different, three different things. And then you can go to the second tier of that, which is putting a man on the board or defending yourself with a fealty to that man so you won't have to worry about that one. And the grid for that will be just white hexagon. I, I like the idea of a simple game, you know what I mean? Um, go simple. So it's kind of a meld of abstract and uh, 
a Euro strategy game for that one. And I'm tempted to build that one first because it would, uh, I don't have to design the cards for that. Because there's no cards for it. But the uh, other one works in the same dynamic of where you're uh, uh, harvesting off a map. Uh, so you'll look, oh, mountainous region. But this is also going to be a bidding game on this next game that's more colorful with that map. There's the map that I'm making uh, the board for, which is just white hexagons. And then there's the board for which it's the map of the United States or the entire planet. Uh, so I'm debating which one. How many times can I say debate in an entire video, right? I'm going through in my head kind of extrapolating, do I want to build the one that's a hundred dice that so you roll one at a time? It would cost like 50 bucks to make that game. Or the one that would cost me 80 bucks to make that game, where there's the little chits to where you're harvesting the things off the map. And the terrain determines what you multiply it by in order to get the full bid price. So you'll, you'll, you won't know what the bid is on the opposite side. Uh, because you're randomly, you randomly place them before you go, and you can't look at the back side. You just boom, 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 boom. Um, when you land on it, you place uh, a timer. There'll be 10 timers in the game. That's, that's 10 bucks on that. So I'm trying to tell you how much it does cost to build a game. Overall, this, each game will cost between 50 and and $100, but those are two games that I'm talking about here. There's also a mint tin game that will hold in your pocket and you just roll three dice and the dice determines the terrain and the terrain determines which three resources you can take from. But you have to ultimately build a machine out of six or a scenario or something, just something that makes sense and then you get a point. So that's three ideas I have for games. Another one I have is uh, um, called Counselors of the Thief. Where you're doing like a Tetris shapes on it. But before that, you're uh, choosing from your tableau, you're choosing from the table, or you're choosing from the bag what you want. And then the piece is, uh, it's got a high or a low value on the hexagon itself. It'll be a picture of that Tetris piece. So it'll be like the, the attack and then the defend upon that. So you'll... Uh, and that'll win you uh, uh, the uh, Tetris piece. So you're like, oh, I got I have five secret things. Which one am I gonna play? Am I gonna win out? It's kind of like a monolith magic, the gathering type of thing. Uh, I don't like the idea of ripping off other game scenarios. Okay. So this is why this wouldn't work with squares because there's six sides in the dice. Let's say that this is the first roll, and so you move that into any kind of position you want. Uh, but in order to complete that area, you have to have at least two sticking to it. So you got the one, and you got the one, and they each got one, so that's a complete orchard. Uh, if it's on the map of the world, it may as well be a Cold War, so that's a minefield, or that's a mission silo, or a mission... Um, area or whatever you would call an area for a missile, like a missile launch area. And then you actually put missiles on the board by buying them. So you'll, you'll do that and that'll um, win you the chance to take a missile. And then you take a missile when you have three, that's nothing. But when you got six, well, then you can do something with that. You can put a missile on the board or maybe not a missile, but uh, you put each one, so each one of these would be like a missile, but the missiles don't do anything. It's a cold war, but you're winning something like a uh, jet. You're, you're, cause you want something that can move around fast over the, the plane in terms of the storyline. So you have a bit of a cold war going on. Let's say they do that right there. So you need four to connect to that to complete those, uh, that missile area or that base. We'll just call it a base for now. And it would be no Cold War in history, uh, but it would be a Cold War around the world, like a World War III scenario Cold War, where they're just building up missiles, building up missiles, building up missiles. 
preparing for war, but then after the, you know you you do that, you earn something that can actually fight within the battlefield itself by doing six. You can earn one of those by doing uh, that counts as one. And when you complete this sequence, that counts as one. So you're constantly like building off that one, or you're building off that one. When you see it, you place it, kind of like Carcassonne, where it's like you randomly uh, pull a tile. Look at all the dice I got. You randomly pull a tile, and then you connect it where you see uh, where it goes, rather than the game determining, oh, since you pulled that, you got to set it exactly right there. But this would be a dice scenario. It's the same as pulling cards from... Uh, in Carcassonne, or tiles, if you want to call them that, in other games. Cards, tiles, you can do it with uh, anything, really. Um, some would call them big counters, or big chits, or chits, or counters, where you're constantly trying to build up area in order to earn something. And in Carcassonne, you're earning a, a worker. And then when you complete the thing, you're like, yeah, I'm going to claim that, I got a worker down on that. And this, it would be basically the same thing, except you're rolling dice, and then you you get a fightable character out in the in the playing field. There would be like uh, 200 spaces, so it would be, this is only 100, but my idea would be to have 200 spaces on Neoprene Mat like it got set up. And then when you use all the dice, you just wipe it clean, and then you go again. It's random. But you decide uh, where to place them at. I mean, this could have easily gone over to this section over here. You could have rolled a four over here, but then you have to connect that to a four over there too. You know what I mean? So you're constantly looking for where you can indeed play. We good, Gen Z? Or is it only about you hitting that pussy, you fucking greed mongers? Could you please introduce me to these women? Thank you. So I redrew the map to illustrate hexagons instead of squares like I had shown last night. The dice are going to be a pack of a hundred of them and they're going to be in four different colors because you don't want to, you know, be able to build on anything. You want to like be able to draw the dice like, oh, you know, I can roll this, but I can't fit it exactly where I want to fit it because it's not the same color. And you're building bases. So if that's a roll of four, and then I roll this dice, and then I get a one. That only needs to connect to one to make that a full base, but that still needs to connect to four. So on my next turn, I'll roll another one. Now that one has to connect to six, and this one only has to connect to one. And you're still building, you're building and building and building and building in your bases um, based on how many sides you have to connect to to get a full hexagon. Um, sequence I guess you could say and then once you do that you earn yeah you know, you'd earn a chip and after you earn six of them you could pay three as your um, budget defense or your defense spending or whatever you want to whatever I'm gonna end up calling it the military expense defense spending that's what they call it defense spending and then when you you get up to six of them, you can uh, take three, you spend on your defense, and then, then you add a meeple on the board, and that's your soldier. And they're going around based on how they move, based on areas of control. Um, they're in different classes from Urbana to Suzerian. But the classes are Urbana, Exeter, Prefect, Magus, Basileus, and... Suverian, or Suzerian. These are classes of soldier within this future Cold War scenario that I'm dreaming up. And then you can move those and attack based on those. You can also chop down parts of a base, or attack parts of a base for two on the thing. So an Obama can only move one, and that would be perhaps a green maple. Um, it can only move one, and you're all in control of the same meeples once you land them on the board. Because they're basically just like, anybody can control the soldiers kind of thing. So you have to be strategic in how you move your meeples, because you could move a space away, and then that person would be like, Oh, I only need to move one space because my dude can move six, so I can move one, because it's less than six. Um, 
it costs two to cut a base a little bit. But you have to remember that you're all working on the same bases. If you have, it's not like, you know, each player has a blue base or green base. It's like everybody is in control of the bases. So the really only, the only really thing that you're, uh, uh, competitive on is how you're collecting the things like, oh, Carcassonne kind of strategy, where it's like you're the one that completes the sequence. Um, this would be a complete sequence if this was two and this was one and one. That would be a complete beast right there, base right there, and then you get your meeple, and your meeple can move by areas of control. We're going to be using a different. Uh, shape other than a meeple because these are what I got. I got like these things from my uh, prototyping kit. I got a whole bunch of shit in my prototyping kit. Um, so if this were an Urbana class soldier, it could only move one at a time. But if it was say uh, the next class up, which is an Exeter, it can move two at a time. So it can move here to here. And of course, if it was the the next class up, it could move from whatever the hexagon is down here, one, two, three. And it would go up to six to how many they can move. Once you earn a complete base, you'll get a chip, which will earn you the chance to buy one of these. Just as a reminder, I'm still doing the $50 call-out videos. If you want to put $50 on my cash app, um take it you know it's a job you know uh instagram uh, king daddy telomerase uh that's the same as my cash app it just dollar sign king daddy telomerase uh, all those words are capitalized king daddy and telomerase so if you want me to call out somebody over youtube 50 bucks or I'll just take a donation whatever you want um, 50 bucks to do the call out, I'll take any donation. If you want to do it in lieu of uh, money, I'll take food, like from Grubhub or DoorDash, to be reasonable with you. I usually only get one a day when I get one. So, hit me up, you know, over Insta, and I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, so I'm sure you're probably wondering about the terrain in uh, this game that I'm building. It'll probably be the one that I make. Um, okay, so w when you roll the dice, you'll have to set it somewhere anywhere. You probably want to start on the planes because there's going to be a score track that determines uh, how much it costs to harvest something from there. Well, you're not really harvesting. You're building bases. Uh, that has to be surrounded by at least five other dice. That one has to be surrounded by three other dice. So uh, you're going around kind of like Carcassonne building out of dice, and there's going to be four different colors of dice um, on, well, a map that will be bigger than this because this is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down, and uh, one, two, three, four across. Uh, yeah, the map is going to be about 20 by 20 on a neoprene map. And I'm right now figuring out the cost of that. It looks like it'll sell for like $90 or something, maybe $100 uh, because of all the pieces of dice and stuff. So you're going to go around and you'll be like, hmm, do I lay the dice here? Do I lay the dice here? Well, that's what's open. Um, I can afford that, but um, i got to lay it somewhere, so I might as well lay it on the plains first because that's cheapest. And then, of course, mountains cost more because it's more to climb up the mountain. Um, water costs more because it would have um, a certain amount that you would have to think of, you know, where the water would be for like a missile c coming out of the water. It, the point is, is that the terrains and the various landforms are going to have different prices. Ice is going to be high, mountain is going to be high, water is going to be high, plains are going to be a little lower. Um, and there's a couple other ones. Desert would be low because it's flat land. But you got to build somewhere. And you're just going around. You're rolling a dice at a time each turn. And you're like, oh, two. But you're drawing it out of a bag. So you put it where you think that it could work. That is two connected to it. 
that has needs to have five connected, that has to have three connected to it, and the dice need to be the same color as well. Uh, these dice are multicolored, so it's a little bit different to conceptualize unless you think, oh, a dice can be a solid color. Um, so you're going around earning some sort of token. After you get three of them, you can pay the, your defense budget, um, but you can't do that until you have one of your soldiers on, and to do that, you have to have six, and then you move up three, put those down, um, and that's your defense spending, and now you have the three that you can play to put your man on, and then you have a treaty if you do three more bases, uh, so you don't get attacked that turn, and you can go around, and you're trying to, like, uh, checkers or chess going around trying to get your man and basically murder them um, you know how board games are checkers chess you're trying to capture your man or kill your other man uh, the object is to have one left standing and you're the only one standing it's your turn and then there's one left then you win and I'm trying to see if how to do it uh, differently, like would one player control the acrylic meeples, would one player control the wood meeples, that'd be probably something, I'm thinking about making it a two player game. What else? But anyway, you're basically just going around building bases, and then you're looking for the empty spots to fill in uh, to complete a base out of the four different colors of dice. I'm going to show you guys my sick prototyping kit that I built actually while I was living on the street. Um, this has probably cost me like 50 bucks over time. Oh, one rolled off. I'm going to have to collect that. But that's all the shit that's in my bag for prototyping games. It's actually gotten a lot easier now that I've built this kit out of various little trinkets that I bought from various little places, mostly from uh, Uncle's Games, downtown Spokane. Ooh, colors. Okay, 52 cards in a deck, minus the jokers, unless you want to count those as wilds. The Q has a Q and a U, letters on each card, so that's the alphabet twice. All you do, well, this deck has been shuffled. So a hand of seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As a matter of fact, the hand of 10, one, two, three, would give you more of a chance and you just build words. See, the Joker is wild. You try to build a word and you get a point per each card that you use. So five letter word would be five points, two letter word would be two points. And you just build words. The object would be to get, um, I guess a thousand points would be fair. You could even do it to 10,000 if you want to play a really long game or maybe just a hundred to do a short one. Because most words are going to be between 5 and 12, and that'll be 8 hands at 12, so it'll be between 8 and 16 hands. An average hand of bridge is 42, uh, or an average game of bridge is 42 hands, so that's about 45 minutes of play. I think it's 45 minutes of play, but I know a game of bridge lasts 42 hands. So... You could do this for 50 hands or 25 hands, however many you want in the high point. As an uh, as an older guy interested in younger males and a, a libtard or whatever you want to call me, 